Welcome back. We're talking about shaders of a form of discrimination favoring lighter skin tones to darker ones. Across Africa, millions of women take measures to lighten their skin. In the West African nation of Cote d'Ivoire, skin lightening creams are banned, but many women have found ways around that ban, and the products are still widely used. I like fair skin tones. I like them. I don't want to blacken. I just don't want to. The infectious complications can be easily treated, but the complications such as diabetes, hypertension, renal failure, these complications are so severe, the patients will need lifelong follow-ups. There are things that are forbidden to sell today that I still see on the market. Personally, I see that regulations are not enough. We also need to educate people. But across the continent, Nigeria tops the list of women who use skin lightening creams. According to the World Health Organization, more than 75% of women there admit to using such products. In Togo, nearly 60% of women use these creams, and 35% of South African women say they lighten their skin. To explore the skin lightening industry in Africa, Neo Beverly Mavita joins us from Johannesburg. She's the founder of the Yellow Bone Factory, a lifestyle and cosmetics company in South Africa. Uh, thanks so much, Bev, for joining us. Really appreciate it. I was stunned by this factor that some 35% of women in South Africa use skin lightening creams. Why is this? Thank you so much for having me, and hello to everyone and all your guests. Um, you ask a very interesting question, but um, I think that people just don't think about the fact that skin lightening is not very far removed from the procedures that people do to change their weight profile, for an example, or to change the way their hair looks. All beauty procedures are just an effort on the part of the individual who undergoes them to reinterpret themselves in a different way. So the fact that 30% of women in South Africa use skin lightening products just says that very fact that 30% of women in South Africa feel that if they had a different kind of complexion, they would feel a different way about themselves. Beverly, you're in South Africa and the critics might say that's really kind of naive considering uh, the history of color and race in South Africa. I think that there is a large misconception between the relationship of skin lightening and race or whiteness. Um, I've never had anybody walk into my office and say to me, I want to look white. It always begins with um, a desire to maybe remove a blemish or return to an original complexion or just to look different, but never to trans or to go across race uh, lines to the extent to be something that you authentically are not. Um, it's not a matter of consciousness or um, issues about race and a person's identity with uh, whatever race group they come from. It's purely a cosmetic and aesthetic procedure. Um, that's why I liken it to weight loss or changing your hair. That's exactly what it is, uh, except with our company, the results that you get are irreversible. Uh, just let me follow that, though. You say you empower women in their choices, and everyone's obviously for empowerment of women, but so many women who are darker want to be lighter. So where's that sense of need coming from? I think that for the point of view that we speak about empowering women with our company is giving women choices. We come from a country where it's easy to tell from just looking at a woman what generation she comes from and what skin lightening products she may have used on her skin. And that is what spurred us to start a line of skin lightening products which would be safe and which in the years to come people wouldn't be able to look at the signs of damage on your skin and tell what products you were using. So the the fact of the matter is that skin lightening is something that's deeply ingrained in every culture. It's not in the South African experience alone or in the American experience alone. In every culture in the world, there's just a desire on the part of women to have flawless skin. Now, what it 
extreme or degree of lightness you want to term your flawless skin is an individual choice and that's exactly the empowerment that we offer to women and men across the world to say to them if this is what you want to do here's a safe way to do it the, the numbers are quite incredible in, in nigeria 77 percent of women use it uh, across africa and asia as well high percentages as well uh, uh, is it safe because there are doctors that have said that this industry is basically unregulated uh, and that there is no way to actually reverse permanently pigmentation as your skin rejuvenates, so does your pigmentation. So there are worries that this unregulated market could actually lead to a lot of health side effects for women. Okay, the products that we use don't contain the elements like hydroquinine and mm. cortisone and mercury and lead, which first of all, you need to be a registered uh, pharmacist or dermatologist to uh, give dispense to people. The, the ingredients that we use to make our products are mostly organic. Like I say, we use glutathione, we use arbutin, we use ascorbic acid, we use kojic acid. Most of the ingredients that we use are substances that are available to be used and are pretty safe in terms of the record that they have for skin lightening over a prolonged period. We don't offer quick fix solutions. We offer treatments to our clients, treatments that take into consideration the fact that the skin is an organ that is constantly regenerating and in order to affect um, the pigment agents in your skin, you need to work on it over time and you need to work on it with the knowledge that the skin is continuously regenerating. Can I ask you why you called your company Yellowbone? Because if for people watching, Yellowbone is associated <laughs> with hip hop, a term for lighter skinned black people. And there's a lot of lighter skinned black women, very attractive in videos that perhaps young women want to emulate. They want to seem more attractive to men. Um, is that why you're targeting this audience with that name? Well, my understanding of the term yellow bone is not necessarily a woman who's a particular complexion, but a woman who takes care of herself in a particular way. But it, it has been used in that context uh, quite widely here in the United States, in South Africa, elsewhere. Granted, for us, that's just semantics. Um, we understand the yellow bone just to be a woman who takes pride in her appearance, and not just a woman, by the way, any person who takes pride in their appearance and working at it and understanding that you have the leverage and the power to look the way that you desire, whether it's temporarily or for the rest of your life. And um, the term yellow bone factory speaks to that. It's a space in which you're allowed to literally choose what it is that you want to look like and we can offer you the tools that can assist you to get there. Okay, you're in South Africa and I brought this a little bit up before I, I want to go deeper. Uh, black consciousness globally grew out of the apartheid movement largely. There was a huge um, push in, in, the, in the 70s and 80s to consider black beautiful as the struggle continued uh, against apartheid. Um, some people think that what you're introducing is somehow betraying that that trying to uh, encourage people to be lighter uh, than they are, that, that, that African uh, men, sometimes in South Africa, light, lighter women, you're playing into insecurities of women. All this sort of uh, race issue is highlighted by what you're selling. That's what the critics are saying. My personal opinion on that is that that is just an attempt to take r political rhetoric and put it in a space that it doesn't belong. And to put a spin on that, um, as a black woman, I believe that it's my prerogative to look the way that I want to and no other woman should be put into a box that says that because you are of this race, this is what you will look like. Women in all other races explore all sorts of things. They tan, they lighten their skin, they straighten their hair, they curl their hair, they put um, extensions into their hair and nobody ever gives them issue about that but when it comes to the black woman and her deciding what she wants to look like it seems as if society believes that they have a space to sort of make comments in well, terms of no you can't look that light no you can't look that bodacious and that is not um, necessarily progressive or helpful but, but, just, but that doesn't go explain the backlash when sort of famous singers in South Africa come out and say we use uh, skin lightening products uh, famous models uh, people like that there's there's a huge backlash uh, sometimes in social media, in the media uh, uh, about this. That doesn't necessarily just mean individual empowerment. There's something in society going on here, right? I think that people have 
like I say, the propensity to just politicize things that really don't need to be politicized. The decisions that people make about their bodies and the way that they look is entirely their idea and their prerogative. Um, we can't uh, sit back and be armchair critics about how people want to look. Yes, we come from a country which has got racial tentacles all over the place, mm. but um, that doesn't mean that as a woman you should be dictated to in terms of how far you should take what you call beautification methods. Neo Beverly Mobita, thanks so much for joining us. That's all we have time for.